There are two different versions of Squarespace, 7.0 and 7.1, and they're both still active and both supported by Squarespace. There are a ton of differences though between those two, and it's really important to know the differences if you're using Squarespace. There's also two different types of editing experiences, meaning like how you drag and drop things around on the page or how you tweak different sections of a page. Classic Editor and Fluid Engine. These are important to learn about too, or at least know how to tell one from the other so you can actually edit your site and follow the right tutorials. So how can you tell the differences? What are the main differences? What version of editor should you be using or what are you actually using now? We're going to go over all of that today, so let's jump right in. So let's go ahead and start by talking about the differences between Squarespace version 7.0 and 7.1. Squarespace 7.0 has been around for quite some time now. So if you started your website before 2020, then you'll definitely be familiar with this version. And the biggest signifier for version 7.0 is the way the templates work. So there are so many different 7.0 templates to choose from. However, each of them come with different underlying functions. This means that the template that you choose determines which design features you have access to. And the catch is you cannot mix and match between templates. If having an unlimited buffet of design options to choose from stresses you out, honestly, I wouldn't blame you. If you start with a template and realize after you started to design that you don't have access to a key design function, you're going to have to go all the way back to the beginning and start from scratch with a brand new template, which isn't something that you really want to do if you're halfway done with your website. Squarespace does try to help us out a bit by grouping the 7.0 templates into quote unquote families. All of the individual templates that fall under one family are going to have the same underlying design functions and abilities, even though they might look different stylistically. For example, the Brine family, which is one of our personal favorites, is a group of 7.0 templates that all have the same functions. So there are a ton of templates that you can see here that fall under the Brine family, including the Brine template. And all of these are going to allow you to do the same thing functionally, but are going to be different from templates under, say, the Bedford family or the Ishimoto family. So while you can't switch between families of templates, you can switch to a template within the same family without losing the underlying structure and design abilities of your website. Some of the biggest differences you'll find among template families in 7.0 comes down to the site styles. In 7.0, all of the design functions for your website are controlled in this site styles panel, and the things that you're actually able to customize can be different depending on which template family you're using. Things like your header, primary navigation, galleries, and other content throughout your website may or may not be able to be tweaked depending on which template you have your website built on. A good example of this is mobile customization. Some template families, like the Brine family, have a ton of different mobile options. You can customize your navigation, the branding, the icon, and other things that appear on mobile. Other templates might have a fraction of these customizations, and some might not even have any. So it's just important to keep that in mind when you're choosing which template and template family to choose. Another design capability that is unique to 7.0 is how you can customize your fonts and colors throughout your website. Whatever you set here is what is going to appear on every single page of your 7.0 website. This is nice if you do have a really simple website with not a ton of color and font customizations, but it can also limit what you're able to do visually. So again, it's just something to keep in mind. Another signature 7.0 feature is the use of index pages. Index pages, signified by these two little lines, allow you to create one big long super page comprised of essentially a bunch of smaller pages. This is really great for creating a bunch of different sections on a home page or something like a sales page. But it also can get a little bit confusing since each of these sections are their own page in of itself. When you click a section under an index page, it'll take you directly to that page on the bigger index page. And the settings for that page or section are going to be the same as any page on your website. This is something that is super unique to 7.0 and also something that's not available in 7.1, which we will go into next. 
Now let's get into 7.1. So Squarespace 7.1 is the newest version of Squarespace. And although that 0.1 might hint at a slight upgrade, it's actually a pretty big change from 7.0, mainly because when it comes to Squarespace 7.1, all templates are created equal, at least functionally. The only difference between these templates is going to be the initial stylistic choices, like the colors, the fonts, the images, etc. And if I forgot to mention this before, all of those things are completely customizable. So this means that you no longer need to worry about choosing the exact right template. You don't have to stress about it because every single 7.1 template has the ability to use the same design functions and elements. Now, unfortunately, there are a couple of design features that Squarespace hasn't yet carried over from 7.0. However, 7.1 is continuously being updated, so who's to say that these won't eventually make their way over? And plus, it seems that for each thing left back in 7.0, two new features have appeared in place. This includes the Fluid Engine Editor, which we'll get into more coming up next, the fact that there are no longer index pages in 7.1, so in this newer version, pages are comprised of individual sections, which we personally think is way better than the 7.0 index pages. You can stack sections on top of one another to create one really long homepage or sales page. And you also have control of each individual section. So you can adjust the height, the width, and the color of a section without it applying site-wide. 7.1 also has all new site style settings. In this version, you can create cohesive color palettes along with color themes to help you individually customize pages and sections throughout your website. There's also unique font packs to choose from that come in all different combinations and design styles, and you'll find some brand new site-wide animation settings. 7.1 has also introduced some new text sizing options like the addition of a heading 4, as well as multiple different paragraph sizes. You can add portfolio pages in 7.1, which is a collection page that's similar to a blog, but made specifically for portfolios and image galleries, which is super cool. And in 7.1, you also have the ability to create as many online courses as you want, using the brand new courses feature, which includes things like lessons and modules, video content, and more. This is an incredible feature in version 7.1. Okay, now that we've ironed out some of the differences between Squarespace 7.0 and 7.1, you're probably now wondering what all this talk of the classic editor versus the fluid engine editor is all about. So let's go ahead and dive into that. So first things first, classic editor versus fluid engine editor simply refers to the way that you edit page or section content within Squarespace. So this is the way that you add an image block or move a text block around or create different design layouts. 7.0 and 7.1 are completely different Squarespace versions. So they have a lot of differences all around in both design and in the back end. Classic Editor and the Fluid Engine Editor, while also completely different, only come down to actually editing the content and the layout of your website. So what is the Classic Editor? It's just that, the classic, aka older way of editing your content in Squarespace. This is the editing experience that all 7.0 websites use. So if you have a website on Squarespace 7.0, you are probably very familiar with this Classic Editor. There are also some ways in which you can still, for now, access the Classic Editor on a Squarespace 7.1 website. For example, if you upgrade your website from 7.0 to 7.1, the sections will auto-convert into Classic Editor. If you're using a 7.1 website that was created prior to the Fluid Engine being released, and you can even still add a Classic Editor section while building in 7.1. You'll also notice that no matter which version of Squarespace you have, all blog posts are going to still be using the classic editor, at least for now. Hopefully this is going to be upgraded soon. The Fluid Engine Editor, on the other hand, is the new editing experience just for 7.1 website. It's much more flexible than the classic editor, hence the name Fluid. Again, Fluid Engine is only for 7.1 websites, so you cannot access this editor on a 7.0 website. And when you start a new website with Squarespace and create new pages, they're automatically going to be using the 7.1 Fluid Engine Editor. 
It's important to note here that Fluid Engine is constantly improving and being added to, whereas the classic editor isn't going to get any of the new features that are added to Fluid Engine. So now let's talk about the main differences between the two editors. I could honestly talk forever about the individual details that are unique to Fluid Engine, like block alignment, overlapping blocks forward or backward, individual section settings like row count and unique dividers. I could go on and on. So if you want to explore all of those individual Fluid Engine features, the best thing to do would be to check out one of our other posts or walkthrough videos specifically on Fluid Engine or to try out Fluid Engine yourself and play around with all that the editor has to offer. For now, we'll just go through the most prominent differences between Fluid Engine and the classic editor. The first and probably biggest and most noticeable difference between the two is this Fluid Engine grid-based layout. If you're familiar with using the classic editor, the first thing you're gonna notice when switching over is the Fluid Engine's signature flexible grid that allows you to place blocks anywhere in a section. This means that you can go ahead and say goodbye to spacer blocks. In the classic editor, spacer blocks were the only way that you could create space between content. But with the Fluid Engine editor, you can move blocks around freely to create unique layouts, and you can even overlap blocks without the use of any spacers or coding. Another change is that while the same type of essential blocks are still available on both the classic editor and Fluid Engine, except of course the spacer block, the new Fluid Engine editor offers a variety of brand new block settings to help you customize your content even further. There's also quite a few new section settings that come with Fluid Engine, which allow you to further customize the look and style of the individual sections on a page. To access your section settings, make sure that you're hovering over the section you want to edit, and then choose Edit Section in the top right corner. Now, this is all just a little snapshot of what is currently available for blocks and sections within the Fluid Engine Editor. So be sure to check out your own settings and play around with things yourself to get familiar with all there is to edit. And of course, after you're done playing around and you love what you've done, be sure to save all of your changes. Another massive difference between the classic editor and the Fluid Engine editor is that designing for mobile view is completely separate from desktop view when you're in Fluid Engine. This is a huge advantage because it allows you to have full control over your site's mobile design. Squarespace's classic editor automatically optimizes your desktop design to fit the mobile screen. And while this can be quite convenient, it also sometimes forces content blocks to be displayed in a way that might not look the greatest on mobile. So having an independent mobile design is a really great way to reduce any need for custom coding or frustration in order to achieve the look that you want. You can move image blocks and text blocks and button blocks around within the sections anywhere you want, and it's not going to affect the view that you've created for desktop. That's all going to stay the same. One important thing to note, though, is that only the layout and configurations of your blocks is independent. The actual content of your website, like images and text, cannot be changed independently. If you replace an image or change some of the text, those changes will also be made on desktop view. So just something to keep in mind. Now, there are also a few things worth mentioning offered in the classic editor that have not been carried over to Fluid Engine. The first thing is image block layout. If you're someone who loved using the layouts like card and overlap, and stack, then you're going to be bummed to know that they didn't make it over to Fluid Engine. That's probably because you can create similar designs in Fluid Engine by moving things around and overlapping blocks, but the ease of use that came with these block layouts is going to be missed. The next thing is image block animations. Squarespace 7.1 allows you to create site-wide animations. However, Fluid Engine no longer gives you the option for individual image block animations. And the final classic editor feature that hasn't made it over to Fluid Engine is the ability to wrap text around an image. Okay, so after all of that, how do you tell which version of Squarespace you're using, 7.0 or 7.1? To figure that out, navigate to your Pages panel and scroll to the very bottom. You should see something like this that tells you which version you're using. If you're using 7.0, you'll also see the template that you're using and the family that that template is in. If you're in version 7.1, it'll just say version 7.1 at the bottom. 
It's also really simple to tell whether you're using the classic editor or Fluid Engine. If you are using a 7.0 website, then you're for sure using the classic editor as Fluid Engine isn't available for 7.0. If you're using a Squarespace 7.1 website, go ahead and navigate to a page on your website, click edit as if you're about to make a change, and scroll to whatever section on the page you want to inspect. You can have a classic editor section and a fluid engine section both living together on one page, so it's important that you check section by section. If you do see an upgrade button in the top left corner of a section, this is the prompt to upgrade your classic editor section to the fluid engine. Having this prompt here makes it very clear that your section is currently classic. If your content is being built on top of a grid, then you are already using the fluid engine editor for that section. And a quick tip here, you can click G on your keyboard while in editing mode to make the Fluid Engine grid appear. So here you can see I clicked G and it appeared in this section, so I am for sure using Fluid Engine. If you currently have a website built in Squarespace 7.0 and would like to go ahead and upgrade to 7.1, then you're in luck because Squarespace recently introduced a magic upgrade button that allows you to do just that. We do have a full post and video tutorial about how to complete this upgrade process. So if you're interested in doing this, be sure to go check that out because it will walk you through in much greater detail. That will be linked below this video as well as in the blog post. But just as a quick little how-to, first you're gonna wanna check that your website is compatible with the upgrade. So right now the tool is only available to those using a Brine or a Bedford family template as a base. So just like we did before, we'll navigate to our pages panel, scroll to the bottom, and check our template family right here. We're using the Brian family, so we're all good to go. Next, you'll want to be sure to back up your website just in case something goes terribly wrong during the transfer. And then when you're ready to go, you're going to use the upgrade migration tool by going to website, design, and then update to version 7.1. You'll then follow the prompts to complete the upgrade, view your site in preview mode, and then when you're happy, you can go ahead and publish into 7.1. Now, a really important note here is that upgrading from 7.0 to 7.1 is irreversible. So once you publish, you cannot go back to 7.0. It's also important to note that once you make the switch, each pre-existing section of your new 7.1 website is going to remain on the classic editor system. So you'll have to take it one step further if you want to use Fluid Engine. Remember that upgrade button that we talked about before within each section? Once your website has been upgraded, you'll need to go through and click upgrade on each of your sections to make the switch from classic editor to Fluid Engine. This is also an irreversible change, so once you upgrade a section to Fluid Engine, you cannot go back. The nice thing though is that because each section is upgraded individually, you can totally test one out while keeping the rest in classic editor, or even pick and choose which sections you want to upgrade and which ones you want to keep classic. It's very customizable. Ultimately, deciding which version and editor you should use comes down to personal preference, where you are in your Squarespace journey, are you a pro who's been using the classic editor for years, or are you brand new to starting a website? And also, what kind of design capabilities are you looking for? Are you somebody wanting something a little bit more DIY friendly, or do you want something that can involve a little bit more code and tech? If you're still not sure what you should use, try starting a two-week free trial for both so that you can play around and see which version and editor you like the best. At the end of the day, actually getting in there and playing around with things for yourself is the best way to make a decision. You can also go ahead and read the full blog post that goes along with this video for some more tips on which version to use and which editor to use. Okay, and that's the video. I really hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed and are craving some more Squarespace tips, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We post new videos every single week and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.